Love, light, and blessings. This is Shamanic Iwak Priestess here, and I wanted to make this video. I cannot guarantee that it's going to be a quick video, but I'm going to make a video. Um, last month I have made a video about why I didn't um, post as many videos. Um, I went like three weeks without posting a video. Um, and then I did kind of an update video and uh, like a Sawan tag. Um. And I had said last month I was going to make, um, even though I did finish my African traditional uh, religion series, um, which I was proud of doing that, um, I didn't get to talk about the second part of the Florida water video. Um, one of my lovely subscribers had asked me about the history of Florida water, which I'm going to talk about in this video, um, as well as, and I made some notes, so I don't forget um, anything important. As well as I'm going to talk about candles today as well. Um, so I'm going to be talking about Florida water and its historical uses. There's a part one to this video, um, which talks about the magical properties or the spiritual properties of Florida water. And um, then, then the second half of the video, I'm going to talk about different types of candles that one can use for spiritual um, for rituals and things like that some people call them spells i would rather call them workings or rituals um and you know how you can use different candles in different ways and and, and things like that so i'm gonna entitle this video probably witchy tips and then just put like part two florida water and candle works or something like that i don't know i'm gonna figure out a title after i'm done recording this but but yeah, basically that's what I wanted to make a video on. So it might be a lengthy video. I don't know. So I'm going to begin with the history of Florida water. Again, I made a previous video and it talked about its magical uses. So this will be part two. Now, Florida water, there's many different brands, but this one claims to be the original brand of Florida water, Murray and Lemon. Um, recently, I think about a year ago, uh, I think it was Kelly's uh, Truth and Story. Someone had given her uh, Florida water. She had never heard of it. And one of her subscribers explained what the uses were. I grew up with Florida water my whole life, so my mom always had this. Um, and her ancestral altar, the white altar. I also have videos on that on my channel if you want further information. Um, my background, for those that don't know me, is Espiritismo. Um, hoodoo, santeria, and voodoo. So, um, and in each of the paths that I have been um, initiated into, um, grew up in, um, which voodoo will be my most recent, um, I have seen the practitioners use Florida water. I think some pagans now are using them too, so it's kind of spread. But um, its origins um, is actually from the West Indies um, and the Caribbeans. Um, it was you it was introduced um, in the United States in 1808 and this company was the one that one of the ones that introduced it. Um, this has essential oils in it and it's based as alcohol. Um, it's like a holy water. It's like a holy water basically. Um, Florida water's name is interesting as well. Um, it's supposedly named after the fountain of youth or florida uh which is uh has to do with flower so it's, it's supposed to have essentials uh flower essentials and things like that um it has things like lemon oil lavender oil orange oil some floral oils um and when they first introduced this people were using this as a body splash in the 1800s it was sold at your local pharmacies for medicinal uses such as for minor um, headaches, which it's funny because my mom always used to take uh, like uh, bands and put a couple of drops of this and tie it around her head for headaches and things like that. And also have like two peppermint, like spearmint or peppermint um, leaves at each temple when she would get her migraines along with medicine. Um, fevers, this was used for colds and body aches. Um, and things like that. So it does have medicinal juices. Um, 
to freshen up a home. Um, people used it as body splashes and things of that nature. This was made when it was introduced in the United States in Manhattan, even before Florida was a, officially a state. And then its company eventually transferred to New Jersey, even but um, it still says to this day made in the USA. Um, this one claims to be the original. Um, now, eventually, because remember we're talking about, and I want to make a disclaimer. African American history has long existed. There were Africans here before the slave trade, and there were African uh, American people that have lineages today that were never enslaved. So not every African American was enslaved. Not all of them have slavery in their history. Um, they were prosperous um, black families in the United States and other parts of the world as well. So I just wanted to make that disclaimer. Okay, so I'm going to talk about, so I just wanted to let everybody know, I kind of, I know that history and I want to just let it out there because I have a feeling they're going to comment that on um, the video. And so I just, I'm aware of that history and I'm sending it out to the universe and the world so they know that too. Now, as far as how did it get its magical uses in hoodoo, voodoo, and santeria, well, now, this does come from, like I said, they were well-to-do African-American uh, people, African people in the Caribbean and the United States. There were some that were not prone to slavery. So they were using it as body washes and things like that. Um, and um, the when they made this elixir, they always said that it had magical properties. Now, remember I said hoodoo, voodoo, and santeria, you kind of use what you got. So... When there were people that were enslaved, the ones that were enslaved in the West Indies, in the Caribbean, they kind of used to take this from the masters, like, you know, just a little bit and use it for magical uses. And it became part of their spiritual practice. And it's pretty much spread everywhere because pretty much anybody on YouTube knows what Florida water is. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people on YouTube know what Florida water is. Um, so that's the historical basis of it. You kind of use what you got. Like, um... Things like um, eggshells in hoodoo, you, you'll find that in voodoo as well. Uh, spiritual chalks that are made out of eggshells. Uh, spiritual chalks that are made out of cornmeal. Um, you could do magical things with jars and, and, and just so many things that you could find in the everyday. Um, the people just kind of use what they could um, and incorporated it into their um, traditions and things like that. So... And to this day, you will still see it in a lot of hoodoo, voodoo, and santeria, and voodoo practices and things like that. This is a very big, uh, important uh, part of my spiritual practice. And again, that's a part one that kind of talks more about the magical properties of Florida water. But basically, that's the historical um, history of Florida water. It was a body splash and was used uh, for minor aches and pains. And then people started incorporating it into their magical practices. Um, out of necessity and things like that because it did have healing properties to it. And I got to say, I'm not a doctor, but um, I have used this for um, aches and pains. I have used this for headaches and things like that. Um, it does work. So, and I always keep it in my, um, sorry, my laptop is about to die on you guys. Hold on one second. I'm going to pause. All right, guys. So sorry about that. Um, and I had to pause anyways because once I um, my laptop was dying and I didn't want it to like cut off recording and someone was messaging me to schedule a reading tonight so I had to pause anyways. Um, for those that don't know, I do work from home. I'm a full time reader and I am a shaman. I just came back from a a, a trip um, helping someone's family spiritually. Um, and doing an intensive healing that's still not completed. So I still have some stuff I have to do at home. But I did a lot of hand stuff over there as hands on things over there as well. So I was in the South this past weekend and therefore wasn't able to read anybody on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Uh, well, Sunday's my day off, but Friday, Saturday, and Thursday because I had to um, get ready for my trip. I did very limited readings on Thursday. So have a lot of uh, readings and stuff to catch up on. So I'm going to be doing that. But I wanted to take a little bit of time and record a video that I've been wanting to do for a while. So again, sorry about having to post the video. Okay, so that's the um, historical 
history of Florida water. Um, basically, it got its name from the Fountain of Youth, which you can see the little colonial people on the bottom of the sorry, bottom of the label. And you can see the fountain of youth. So anyway, so now I'm gonna talk about candles. And what I wanted to talk about candles first and foremost, and I think I gave this tip on one of my um other videos. I'm using white for the purpose of keeping it simple. Um I use color candles in my practice as well, but I figured I would just use white. Most people have access to white candles, so just to make it easier for this, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's a lesson or tutorial or whatever you want to call it. Um, so um, I'm going to start with the easiest candle you can get accessible to you. Um, I do use a lot of uh, candles, among other things, in my practice mojo, grease, grease bags, uh, track magic, uh, um, animal parts. Um, so on and so forth, but I do use candles as well. So I wanted to keep it simple and just talk about candles for today. And the first candle I'm going to introduce is this little birthday candle. Um, these are very easy to get. I use all kinds of colors of these. Um, I might use these on like a new moon or on a full moon. Um, the ones that have colors that represents all the elements or the four directions. Um, so I might use this as a guiding light. Um, I might use this to charge uh, uh, crystals that I'm going to use on a crystal grid or to charge a gris gris bag. Um, of course, I make my own oils, so I anoint it with oils and herbs and things of that nature. I do my um, prayers, incantations, my psalms, you know, just a lot of stuff. But um, I usually use a candle like this. Um, if I'm going to power up a jar or something like that, um, I do use these kind of candles as well. And they're very inexpensive. You can get like I think like anywhere from 10 to 12 for like 99 cents in some places. So these are good for like um, to charge up things. Um, representation maybe of the elements. Things of that nature. So I don't inscribe anything on these. These are just like a quick. When I'm just doing a quick charge up of something. After I smoke it and wash it and do all the other stuff that I do to cleanse energy. I like to recharge it and put my intentions through. Uh, candles, amongst other things um, that I do, smoke, reading psalms, incantations, prayers, and things like that. But these are the kind of candles I use for that kind of stuff. Um, tea light is another one form of a candle that I use in my practice. And I use this um, a lot. Like, let's say I'm doing a reading or something. I like to always have a, a lit candle. So I'll charge it and I'll make my family sigil. I have a secret family sigil that I do with everything, which brings in my ancestral line. And I always anoint it, you know, after I cleanse and charge this candle using this kind of candle. Um, I light it while I'm doing my readings and things like that with my scented candles alongside it and I keep it on my selenite candle holder and I'm I'm very 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 drawn to selenite so it brings up that really high uh vibration uh, also clear quartz oh my god I would like to get a candle holder that is made out of clear quartz I'm gonna look I'm gonna see if I can find some of that but um I love using this uh selenite candle holder it just really amplifies uh my vibrations I like the heart shape because I like always want to read with love for, and, and caring you know because I do read on sensitive topics with clients and things like that I do so I use this more as a guiding light or when I'm doing actual readings or something or as part of my rituals um, as I said I practice uh, voodoo so I do um, participate and conduct uh, Vadoon rituals or uh, Santeria rituals or Hoodoo rituals and I might use this as just a protection light while I do light my other candles and do other um, traditional uh, with my traditional ritual tools and secret uh, rituals that I do but I always have this lit when I do anything before I begin a working I use a tea light and after I like to have 
a guiding light besides the candles that I'm using or the tools that I'm using or whatever kind of working I'm doing. I do like to have a tea light on just to always have the ancestral protection, to call in my protections, to open and close the portal as well. So tea light, I use that a lot for that. I don't use tea lights for spells, really. I use them, like I said, more as a guiding light. These I do use for actual spells, chime candles. If it's like a short spell, um, I also use chime candles as um, an offering to a spirit. If I want to draw attention to an offering that I'm making to the spirits, I always like to light their way. The candle's going to correspond to that spirit's color. Um, there might be things engraved in it, uh, maybe the spirit's name, things of that nature. Um, I have used this too for quick spells, like something that just like a quick not very complicated. I might write whatever it is or petition paper and then put this on top of glass or holder or something like that. So I do use this for very quick spells. Um, guiding uh, a guiding light as well. If I don't have tea lights, I can use this um, to charge things or as giving a offering to a ancestor or a spirit. So and I would use a chime candle for that. This I use in a certain a voodoo ritual that I was taught um, that has to do with, um, I don't know how you call it in English. When I'm having like a outer body journey, when I'm receiving, when I want to receive direct messages. So this is for channeling for me and certain voodoo rituals for astral projection. And um, I use this on myself, or clients and things like that. Um, and this is a vigil candle or a Jewish Sabbath candle. So these are used a lot in my practice as well, but more for astral projection, meditation, um, and things of that nature. Then I also have in my practice um, pillar candles of different colors. Oh, I forgot to include one of my candles, which I might pause the video and quickly go find it because I want to include all the different kind of candles. I forgot this one that I use. So I might pause this video. This one, the pillar candle, I use more for my ancestor altar. Um, and I usually inscribe the names of an ancestor or a sec another secret way that I will put an ancestor in there, which I'm not going to share that part. But um, these are dedicated to my um, ancestors, like my direct lineage, and usually is on my white ancestor altar. Um, and that's what I use this type of candle for. I don't really do spells with these kind of candles. And then I'm going to pause the video and show you the two main candles that I do workings with. Like I said, I'll occasionally use a chime candle, but they're more offerings. Um, if I want to draw attention to an offering, because I do offer actual physical things to uh, the spirits that have chosen to uh, work with me. Um whether that's food or an actual like gift or something like that, I want to draw attention to that. So the spirit could say like, hey, I have something for you. I wanted to thank you for what you've done for me, or I'm giving you this so that you can help me with such and such. So give me one second. One second. I'm going to get to the other candle that I forgot to get. Hey, guys, I am I'm back. So the next candle I wanted to talk about is my other candle that I use to I use this a lot for workings um, certain kind of spells and um, I also use figurine candles which I'm not gonna bring those out um, I'd rather keep those secret um, there's certain certain kind of candles I use that I won't put on camera um, but those are the ones that actually look like certain figures and there's certain reasons and certain ways I use those kind. But um, this one I do feel comfortable sharing. I do use taper candles, whether it's to inscribe some things. Um, lots of, uh, depending on the color, it's not necessarily white. So um, for protections, reversals. Um, yeah. Also offerings as well. And things of that nature. So I do use these for different types of spells as well money spells. I could use this for anything. So I use a lot of taper candles in my practice. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and I use the ones that a lot of people use too, um, seven day candles. These I use for longer workings. Um, this I use for a shorter working, this one or a figuring candle. 
um, but this one I use for loan workings, your uh, seven day, nine day novena candles. I always make sure that it's in the middle. And um, I also use votive candles, which I'm not going to pause the video anymore to bring out. But um, votive candles kind of are like the smaller version of these. And I use those again as a guiding light. So I don't really use them that much. Um, this I use as either an offering to a spirit for like something really big that they gave me with other offerings that I give on the side. Um, or I actually use for spells. Um, I may use one, four, nine, depending on the spells, the number that I'm going to use. But yes, and I use all different kinds of colors. And I use the ones with labels, without labels. If it doesn't have a label, I make my own labels. I decorate my candles. I jimmy them up. I put my sigils in there. They got anointed. Um, I make sure there's a certain way that I make sure the oil goes all the way down when I anoint my candle. And it has a lot to do with the way that I put the sigil and stuff in there. So I like my candles to be dressed all the way down there. Um, I reuse the glass sometimes to make my own candle. Um, I reuse the, the glass sometimes to make my own wanga, um, which I'm not going to get into what that is. And um, so I use a lot of 70 candles as well. In my um, spiritual practice, um, whether it's a healing ritual or an actual working for money, I do money, protection, love, um, beauty, uh, certain things for health. I am not a doctor. Um, just that disclaimer there. Um, see your doctor for medical issues, but I do use things to like bless and protect your health. Um, to summon spirits, to work with ancestors. So I have a lot of uses for a seven day novena candle. So, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I tried to keep it as short as possible, but what are you going to do? Um, I just wanted to give you guys different ideas of different candles you can use for spells because I always see the same kind of like, and there's nothing wrong with it, but like $30 candles that are all fancy smancy. You could take a dollar candle. You could take a dollar candle. You could take a dollar candle. You could take a candle that's 72 for $8.99. You could take a candle that's 20 candles for eight dollars you could take 12 pack of it's not always what you buy is the power behind the witch is the spirits what relationship you have with that spirit because remember if you're practicing things like old traditional religious practices even in the um, pagan religion our ancestors didn't have everything. They use what they had and if you're working from hoodoo voodoo voodoo santeria when they brought us into the new world, like I said, there were um, black people that were rich and did not go through slavery. But for the ones that did, I have lineage to those. They use whatever they have, whether it was Florida water, whether it was the herbs in the cabinet of the master's house, whatever it was, um, they use what they had. So I like to keep it like that. And that's why I know how to make kudu lamps. And I have clients that say my stuff works because it's not always what you have. It's the power behind the witch. Is the power behind the intentions. It's, it's all about raising that energy and developing those relationships with those spirits. At least that's my experience. I want to make a video um, as a homage to La Madama, which I feel is a spirit that's highly disrespected. And few know about her. And she has a, like, a very disrespected uh, legacy sometimes. And I want to bring respect back to a spirit that means a lot to me. I've actually commune with the spirit and asked for permission if I can show her image online. And she gave me the go ahead. So I do want to make a homage to La Madama, the madam, not the mammy. That's mad disrespectful. La Madama, the madam. And I'll talk more about that in a future video. Another video I want to make as well um, is going to be a video about exorcism. What is an exorcism? So um, I might tell um, you guys some stories about that and what are exorcisms. Why would somebody need an exorcism? So those are two videos that I really want to make. Hoping to make them in the next couple of weeks, but my schedule is kind of crazy. But I will be making those videos at least one more video this month. And then maybe the beginning of next month, I'll make one of the other two that I just talked about. But I will make those videos as promised. I made the Florida part two and I also wanted to add a um, candle. 
um, a candle video. So much love, light, and blessings. Thank you so much for watching this video. And until the next video, please comment below because when you guys comment on my videos, that inspires me to make more videos. If I don't really see comments, then I think nobody's watching. And then I kind of don't really make videos. So um, let me know if you guys are interested in those two videos and if you guys want to see future videos on candles and things like that or anything else, okay? There are some things I could share. Some things I'll tell you like, oh, I'm not, I can't really share that. But the stuff that I can share or feel comfortable sharing, I don't mind sharing. So love, light, and blessings. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you to all my subscribers for over 600 subscribers. That's amazing to me. Um, I still want to do that giveaway with the eight Shabbat, um, the, the Sabbaths books from Llewellyn. So let me know if anybody's interested in that. And I also want to add maybe a couple of decks that I might show in another video. Decks that I don't use that are pretty new and very lightly used. So if somebody wants to add to their tarot collection, I think I'm going to do that too so I can make more space. Um, because there are decks that I have that I'm, I'm not even using them and I feel kind of bad. Some of them are like brand new. I think I use like one time. So I feel kind of bad about that. Oh, and I'm also going to make another video on cardamancy. It's not going to be a video how to read cardamancy but how I relate it to my practice, okay? All right, love, light, and blessings. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye, guys.